Hello, everyone. Welcome to Worship in the Word. We're so glad to have you tonight. Those of you that are watching live, plus those that are watching delayed or later, I want to let everyone know that it will be recorded and it'll be posted on Facebook. And if you want to watch it on Facebook or YouTube, just look on my info on a Facebook and you'll see my YouTube channel. I just want to honor God tonight with their blessings. Oh, we bless you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all your gifts, for righteousness, Lord.
says, keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you'll be secure, feasting on his faithfulness. Make God the utmost desire and pleasure for your life and he will provide for you what you desire the most. Give God the right to direct your life and as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. He will appear as your righteousness, as sure as the dawning of a new day. He will manifest as your justice, as sure and as strong as the noonday sun. The times that we live in are very tumultuous <laughs> at the very best. But there's one thing that we can always trust in, and that's the, the righteousness and the goodness of God and his faithfulness. Because God is a God that doesn't lie. And he never changes his mind. His word has been tried as in a furnace of fire purified seven times like silver. All righty. Is that any better? Connie, Gary, can you hear Debbie now? Debbie, say, give a. Well, I just got through doing a scripture. They, sh they should be able to hear me. Okay. Let's try that. Y'all can let me know if we're... Technical so difficulties. Trying to get all our bugs worked out, hopefully on the first season. We'll nope. squash them as they come. I love to watch Terry McGowan. He really ministers to me, and he's got a weekly program on YouTube. And he's got a whole bunch of them in the, on his channel now. But the first couple were really, really rough. Because he had a lot of bugs to work out, too. But we're getting there. Bless the Lord, for oh my soul, I am living in the overflow. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, for oh my soul, I am living in the overflow. Try that. Bless the Lord.
another song that was similar to it it thought and the Lord's presence just filled the room and I just felt like God was speaking to us that he's wanting to do an atmosphere shift and I never even really heard that term before maybe others have used it but God wants to do an atmosphere shift in this, in this time many of us have experienced the power and the presence of the Lord in times past but if we're not careful We'll look back into those old times and wish we were there again. Wish that we could go back and things would be just like they were. Or hoping that God will do the same thing again. God never does the same thing again. He moves on. The atmosphere is shifting. But God never changes. Jesus said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever. That's Hebrews 13, 8. And God's power is healed the same. And I love the scripture in Matthew where John is in prison and Jesus sends out his I mean John sends his disciples to Jesus he's feeling a little down we've all been there 
I don't think he was really expecting to be in prison. And he told him, I just want you to ask him one question. I want you to ask him, are you really the one? Or do we wait for somebody else? And Jesus told him to watch and listen. And he, he went on and he healed the sick and he raised the dead. And he cast out demons. Then he came back to him and said, go tell John what you see and what you hear. Because he was living in the overflow. He was living the kingdom of God. He was doing what scripture says. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And all sickness and all disease and poverty and lack, demonic oppression, anything that's not the peace of God are tools of the devil. And he doesn't want us to live there. against the Red Sea and right before they they walked across and the, that miracle was performed the way the Lord would direct them was by a pillar of cloud by day and a fire by night and when that cloud moved that's when the children of Israel would move and when that fire moved at night that's when they were protected by the fire but if the children of Israel did not get up and move when the, when the cloud moved, then God was moving without them. And it's like I hear the Lord saying, are you going to go with me? Are you going to follow the cloud? Are you going to follow me? Or are you going to stay with, with what's familiar? Are you going to stay in the, in the land of Egypt where at least you had dot, dot, dot? Sometimes when there's uncertainty, the familiarity being whatever it is, sometimes it's more comfortable even though there's pain in that area. Because it's familiar to you and you know what to expect, it's easier to rely or to resort back to those. But the Lord is challenging us as his people. Follow me. Come with me. I'm leading you.
First off, let me read that scripture that Jesus quoted from Isaiah chapter 61 and Luke chapter 4 when he was in the synagogue and they handed him the book and he read this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And if you look at the text he, he read it from, it's out of Isaiah 61. He stopped right in the middle of a verse. The next half of the verse says, you know, in the year of the Lord's vengeance or something like that. And Jesus didn't read that part because that's not what he came to do. Oh, yeah, that's coming. There will be a judgment day for those that refuse to believe, for those that refer, refuse to turn to Christ. And that's what the book of Revelation is all about. But that's not our job. Our job is to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to preach good news. Like Paul said, and I think it's Acts 13, that through the name of Jesus Christ, I'm proclaiming to you the forgiveness of sins to all who believe. Forgiveness of everything that either Peter or Paul once said that the law could never set you free from. Because see, the, all the people in the Old Testament under the law, if you read the book of Hebrews, it gives a good explanation they never had complete forgiveness of sins. Their sins were only covered for a year. But it pointed to Christ, and God established that system to make us ready so that we would believe that there was a coming a day when the perfect lamb would come and take away all of our sins. And it doesn't matter how good or how bad we were before because we were all born sinners, and that's the main thing. And that's what, what it says in Romans but we were born sinners so that by believing in Christ, we could be born in him, believe in him, and be forgiven for all our sins. In Isaiah 54, chapter 7, it's prophesying of Jesus. It said, For a brief moment I deserted you, but with great compassion I will gather you. In overflowing anger for a moment I hid my face from you, but with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. You know, one of the things, I think it's the seven saying that Jesus said on the cross was, Father, why have you forsaken me? Well, that's talking about the scripture. God had to turn his face away from Jesus because he took on all the anger that I deserve. Everything, all the wrath, everything bad that I deserve was poured out on Jesus. So that, if you read on, verse 9 says, This is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. What does that mean? Well, he's making an, uh, a parallel. Just like in the days of Noah, God poured out his waters on judgment on the earth. And then he gave Noah the rainbow, and he swore that he would never do that again. In the same way, he's fixed to make a parallel statement. He says, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, and I will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart, and my, the hills may be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. You know that if you've been born again, God will never be angry with you again because he poured out all his wrath and all his anger on Christ. And that's what that scripture is talking about. Just like God will never judge the earth with a flood again, he will never judge, pour out wrath on those who believe in him. The only wrath left is for those that refuse to believe. And that day will come. For us, but for us to believe, we get all the blessings in him. The scripture says are yes and amen. We serve a good God. And sometimes it's so easy to feel like God's disappointed or God's bad at us. Maybe you've even looked in the mirror and told yourself that you were disappointed in yourself. 
Yes, we all have to grow. But you know that if we're in Christ, He sees us as in Christ, as His beloved children, those that He wants to wrap His arms around.
Thank everyone for joining us and I'll look back at the comments and listen to the video and I'll try to work out any sound or other bugs that I see and hopefully have it ready a little bit better next week at the same time at 7 o'clock central Sunday night and we're going to try to make it a weekly series and for I'm going to post it on YouTube after I get through and I'll put a link or if you, you can just look on my Facebook page and you'll see a link to my a YouTube page and you can share that with anybody you want to by email or anywhere else where they can look at it there if not on Facebook and also if anybody wants to correspond or send comments or anything I've stepped put up a new Gmail address so that I could separate everything out and just receive comments or prayer requests or anything else and I've got that set that up today and it's so new that I forgot it. Hang on just a minute. <laughs> just being honest here. You guys are here on we the are. ground floor with us. Here we are. It's H-O-G-M-218 at gmail.com. I'm reserving that just for ministry and prayer and comments. H-O-G-M-218 at gmail.com. And feel free to share any prayer requests or anything else. That way it won't get lost in my other regular email spam or anything and get deleted or overlooked. Because I'll know that that's just for that purpose. And we thank everybody for joining us. And I say may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. And just give you fresh revelation and fresh peace. And just bring you into a full knowledge of him and in his love for you. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Bye-bye for now.